Hi, this is Bob, the old ham. Got a new rig here I'm working on. Well, it's an old rig, but it's new to me. HW99 Heath Kit. It's a four band rig. It's a very simple rig in that you don't have all those controls. You got an off on switch. You've got a level control that controls your RF output. You've got tuning. You got a band switch. There's four bands, 80, 40, 15, and 10 meters. And then here's your audio level control. That's it. So I was intrigued by this uh, simple rig. I had a chance to get one, so I bought it. It needed uh, work. It was not in working condition. So here are the things that I have done to it to get it working. First of all, I found there was no BFO output at test point 201 right here. I found that this little coil right here, at T201, which is just a single winding, was shorted internally. I removed it from the board, took it apart, and I found out it's got a single winding, and uh, the wires just crossed each other and were shorting out. So uh, I found that after I'd replaced this capacitor here, this 180 peak of ferret capacitor here that goes across the coil. I just left a new one in there. It's a silver mica. So uh, taking that apart, I used very small uh, long nose pliers and squashed the little bumps that held it together and very gently pushed the coil out and then uh, spread the wires apart. I could see where they were shorting. And then I had to take the plastic insert out of that can and put it all back together. Before I took it out, I scratched the number two on the side with a very small screwdriver so I could put it together just like it was. I didn't want to put it together and then, then things wouldn't line up. So another thing I did is I made a little sock. This is some uh, shipping plastic. It's the real soft, squishy stuff. And uh, I just cut it in pieces. I made a little insulating sock to go over the VFO coil can there. Uh, to help with frequency stability. And uh, that I glued together with the E6000 cement. And then I uh, just slip it on there. It's held in place by the top when you put it on there. Uh, another change here is someone did this before I got the rig. He put a blue LED in here instead of the dial bulb. It looks nice. So I left that in there. Back here you see there's a blue wire connected right here where that ferrite bead was. That is the 12 volts going to the VFO and the VFO buffer. And that goes back here to a socket right here, which is a standard coaxial socket. You notice there's a cord on here. And there is a power supply right there, plugged into an extension cord. It's a little 12 volt power supply, like you use for tape recorders and things. And I got very nice DC output. This one is a switching supply. And what it does is it supplies voltage to that VFO uh, 24 hours a day. So you can turn it on. Because the heat kit says let it warm up a half an hour before you use it. And that's too long for me. I want to use it now. So I plugged that VFO in there on 12 volts. So it runs all the time. So it's ready to go. And it takes a lot less time now to warm up. I don't know exactly how much time. But a lot less. I also have a cooling fan that I put on the back here. Here's the cooling fan. This is a 24 volt fan. I've got it running on a 12 volt power pack. The power pack is up here. This is the power pack running it right here. And you can get those power packs, uh, garage sales and things. So uh, that works really good for cooling that. Because that heat sink gets really hot when you're running CW. And uh, the other change I made on here is down here on the level control I put a uh, 470 ohm resistor in series with the level control and I put another 470 ohm resistor from the center contact to the outside the one lug is not used at all so it goes to the outside of the other lug that is used and what that does is that spreads that out so that your level control does not tune real sharp because it does tune real sharp this is a tricky rig to tune I also had to repair this coil here, this uh, L201, 
and I put 220 picofarad capacitors in there. They had 180 picofarad capacitors in there for C221 and C218. I put 220 picofarads in there so the coils were more centered when you tuned them because you could tune them to 18 megahertz, which is the frequency of the crystal oscillator back here, in which case you're transmitting on the wrong frequency because you're tuning to the wrong frequency with that coil. So with the 220 picofarad capacitors in there, it worked much better. After I got all done, I took a little tiny birthday candle here. I, took, I cut a little piece off, put it in the top of those, and heated them with the soldering iron, and let it flow in to hold those slugs in place. It's also an indicator to me, don't mess with those because they are real easy to break. So anyhow, the whole thing's working here. Doing a good job and uh, transmits quite well. Now that's, uh, that's 40 watts out on 80 meters. If I turn this level control up all the way, I get over 60 watts. Uh, I'm not going to run it that way. I'm going to turn it up to about 40 or 50 watts maximum. But that's it. I think the HW9 is a nice little rig. Uh, was not the hardest thing to work on. Not the easiest either. And uh, does a real good job on the air. I've made a couple of contacts with it already. So that's it. I need to put the case back on and uh, get, back, uh, get back on the air. So uh, uh, 73's everybody and good DX.